to Seniors Alive. This program features healthy, interesting, active seniors here in Nevada County and those who work with them. And tonight, I am very pleased to have with us actually local but nationally known author and teacher, Nancy Swayze. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for asking me, Judith. <laughs> Nancy, I first heard about you um, about two years ago, I think, when um, this wonderful book, uh, Audacious Aging, that will eventually be shown there on the screen, and, and I have it right here. Uh, don't try to zoom in on it, though, Sam. Um, came out, and uh, there was an article, there we go on the screen, uh, in the paper about it mm -hmm. and about you. And um, it's amazing the authors that are included in here, Deepak Chopra, Rabbi Zalman Shachter Shalomi. Norman Sheehy, Andrew Weil, Howard Zinn, and you're sandwiched in there right between Gloria Steinem and Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and your wonderful chapter, Like a Child, is so special. Why don't you tell um, the listening audience a bit about your chapter, and that will lead us into what you're doing now teaching and writing about in Nevada County. Well, my chapter... Uh, which is entitled Like a Little Child, um, basically is about <clears throat> my personal um, philosophy for living life audaciously, uh -huh. aging audaciously. Uh -huh. And that is to um, live life every day, look at life every day through the eyes of a child. Because to a child... Every event is new uh -huh. and wonderful, not jaded. Children are not jaded. Adults, we have a tendency to uh, become jaded and so desensitized from uh, all of the stimulation that's going on all the time. And um, I have used the word wonderful as my own uh, description of, of what life is like for me, uh, almost without fail, if someone asks me, how are you today, or how's your day going, without even thinking about it, I say, wonderful. Uh -huh. and Spelled that's, with the F-U-L-L? -L? No, oh, no, just plain, just plain <laughs> wonderful. But um, the fact is, is that wonderful means full of wonder. Yeah. And I've been teased and um, ridiculed even a lot for my overuse of the word. But the fact is, is that um, that's the way I live my life. Uh -huh. And because I see things that way, it uh, has allowed me to maintain uh, the youthful energy that is behind everything I do. Yes. And... Um what you do here in Nevada County is teach a class called Breathworks for the Brain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit about that. Well, um, Breathworks, the, the word Breathworks actually came, uh, was the title of a program that had nothing to do with the brain that I created 15 years ago that was actually an abdominal strengthening and back injury rehabilitation and prevention program uh -huh. that simply involved engaging the deep core muscles uh -huh. by use of the breath. It actually, they were actually the first core exercises that were ever released to the public. Long before Pilates but came But as naive uh -huh. as I am, I didn't even you know, recognize uh, the future of where it was going. But because Breathworks, I've been associated with Breathworks, when I started teaching exercise here in Nevada County, even though I've been teaching exercise for over 20 years, um, I started teaching what I called Breathworks brain-based exercise. Okay. And that's because um, I have had, over the last 
16, 17 years, uh, a lot of very rich and varied experience working with people with everything from traumatic brain injury to uh, stroke rehabilitation, Parkinson's, lots of Parkinson's patients, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy even, and have worked always kind of intuitively um, and created moves that, uh, that I would work with the patient and, and was able to see some pretty astounding outcomes. So I got really fascinated in the connection between how the body works and brain function. Uh -huh. And as I began to age, and as neuroscience began to do so much study on um, the cognitive decline associated with aging, because there seems to be an epidemic of both dementia and Alzheimer's going on in our society, um, I decided to make that my project. So I began probably thousands, if you know, hundreds certainly, if not thousands of hours of study of all the latest neuroscience, reading everything I could, um, pulling all the research papers I could off of the internet, and began to develop some theories that I worked with some Parkinson's patients and some stroke patients and actually arrived at a place in which I formed a hypothesis um, of a very specific way to approach maintaining and in fact facilitating and increasing brain function as we age. Uh -huh. And so that's what I do. But it doesn't look like anything scientific at all. <laughs> it looks like fun and dance, It looks right? like fun and dance and play. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to give the listening and viewing audience a chance to see you demonstrate this <laughs> um, in just a moment. First, why don't you start out with the, the ball, though, the tennis ball that we have here. Can you show us a little bit of that right. um, well, move? Uh, and before actually, you move over to the okay. other set. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to be doing this while we're talking. Yes, yes. Because one of the things, and actually, uh, the working with a tennis ball is a pretty standard uh, Parkinson's, kind of an initial therapy for Parkinson's because of the uh, small motor function involved mm -hmm. in um, in controlling your hands and catching the ball. But one of the things that neuroscience has so uh, discovered and that a lot of the work that Mike Merzenich uh -huh. came out with when he started and released the Brain Fitness Program is that as seniors age, uh, as our bodies age, the systems that we rely on to give us information, decline. Our vision begins to become poorer. We don't see things as sharply. Uh, many older adults begin to experience a reduction in their ability to hear clearly. And in fact, what happens when you're not seeing things uh, in detail as sharply, you quit paying attention because it's too much work. And, um, and so we don't notice the tiny details and the things because it's a lot of work and the body is designed to always be as efficient as possible. When you can't hear things as clearly, and I see this demonstrated in my classes every day, that I can say something over and over again and, and watch whether they're processing the information or not, yeah. uh -huh. because very often we really aren't listening. Uh -huh. We don't hear the words. So by creating exercise that makes them use the visual cortex. Now, I'm using my eyes right now, even uh -huh. though I'm not looking directly at the ball. Uh -huh. But because our eyes work out in like a triangular wide-angle uh -huh. lens, when I'm doing this and talking to you, my eyes are telling 
my hands the ball's coming and where to be in order to catch it. Uh -huh. Seems like a small thing. But if I do this and then I start asking somebody to do something with their foot at the same time. Now I'm tapping my foot at an entirely different rhythm and you can hear I automatically go into a cadence with my voice. Yeah. I have no idea where that comes from. <laughs> Yeah, so that's just amazing. a very uh -huh. small example. Okay, well, I know you've got amazing patterns and so on to show us, and your class members range in age from what to what, and they're all doing these. Um, the youngest member, member that I have had uh, it, what, is 58 um, currently. I've had people that were actually in their earlier 50s, but... Um, I have, I have one student in my class that's 93 right now that has been doing the class faithfully for almost two years. She does it twice a week, never misses a class if she can help it. And uh, in my other class, I have a 90-year-old, an 89-year-old, many students that are in their late 80s who've been doing the class for five years wow. and faithfully three times a week uh -huh. and are moving their feet at a, with a uh, speed and a confidence of movement that most 40-year-olds uh -huh. would have a problem doing. Yeah. Well, I was watching you beforehand, and I know it's a challenge, you know. I mean, I would love to take the class, and it'll be a challenge for me. So let's see. Uh, so, so we want to um, give you a moment to walk over there. So I think we're going to show the book title again, uh, the book cover okay. on the screen. And there we go. So you may go trotting over, Nancy. And this is exciting to see the dance moves. Well, the one thing that I want you to be aware of is that when I'm teaching these classes, the seniors are looking at me, but they're listening to my verbal cues, which I give only a second before I do the move. And although I teach them initially, I usually make up patterns of, uh, say, four steps that I will do a sequence of maybe fours or twos. I'll mix the number of sequences and the patterns and then put on music sometimes that has nothing to do with the kind of dance or movement we're going to do mm -hmm. and that's what makes their brain work mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. although most music dance music is 4-4 four, four, mm -hmm. I decided to challenge them with a with some waltz music okay. now this particular piece that's playing is really more like a polka uh -huh. but it's a one two three and this is the pattern that they learn. Step, heel, heel, step, toe, toe, step, heel, heel. I told them four times, and then the last one is stop. Then step, flat foot, flat foot, flat foot, four times. Then step, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. One, two, three, one, two, three, do it again. Step, heel, heel, step, toe, toe, step, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, stop, other leg, step, heel, heel, toe, toe, step, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, stop. Step, flat foot, flat foot, flat foot, flat foot, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, one more, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then they keep doing it until the music is done. So they're completing this. This is number four. Then I do the other leg. So they're doing this kind of activity for an hour each day that they do class. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm counting in my head. That was four. So I know exactly how many I'm doing. And that's what they do, too. This is three. This is four. Other leg. <laughs> and it's amazing. So sometimes 
I will ask them, like right now, I'd say, okay, what comes next? They'll say, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, one, two, three, one, two, three. They know exactly, <laughs> and that's all I'm going to do of that yeah. right now. Yeah. They know exactly when, they know exactly where they are mm -hmm. in the sequence. Mm -hmm. And what I have witnessed is that when somebody new comes and does the class, you can see the way an average person, let alone an older person, would respond. They're stumped. They can't possibly follow me. You know, they, they, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a response. But in a short period of time, and I mean a really short period of time, that muscle memory, the information that's coming from their mirror neurons, that is the information coming from their eyes to their brain, sets in and they can actually anticipate what the next move is. Now, the Celtic dance, I have uh, made a point of teaching them a bunch of different dances, but I make them all up. None of them are real dances. So the line dance that we do in class, I made up. Uh -huh. The flamenco dance we do, I made up. And this is the Celtic dance that I made up. So whenever the music comes okay. on. Okay, great, there we go. One, two, three, knee, one, two, three, kick, step, heel, wag, wag, toe, one, two. Stomp, 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 other leg, stomp. Tiny, stomp, stomp, toe, heel. Step together, step. Toe, heel, step together, step. Step, heel, toe, heel, step, heel, toe, heel, step, heel, toe, heel, heel, hold, heel. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three. One, two, three, tap. Start again. Prance, 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 prance. One, two, three, knee. One, two, three, kick. Heel, wag, wag, toe. One, two. Stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> you can see it's very active. Toe, heel, step together, step. 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 <laughs> oh, can I sit down now? <laughs> oh, first of all, without a proper warm-up, doing that just on the spot gets me a little out of breath. Even me. Yeah, well, uh, and you think about these 93-year-olds doing it. Absolutely. Just, and the beauty of this, Judith, <laughs> the beauty is that uh, if they can't do it standing, uh -huh. they do it seated. Yeah. They go prance, prance, uh -huh. prance, 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 prance. One, two, three, knee. One, two, three, kick. Heel, wag, wag, toe. One, two. So oh, wow. it's it's the process of learning the patterns, uh -huh. keeping track of them sequentially is yeah. a huge thing. Yeah. Um, the timing, the spacing, the organization of it, all actively use the cerebellum, uh -huh. the basal ganglion, uh -huh. um, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, the short-term memory retrieval system, yeah. because they're having to remember what the steps are. I mean, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if I can learn it. Oh, of course <laughs> I, you can. I, really, of course I mean, you it can. looks so hard. I know, but it's not. Once and you get the the movement going. Yes. Yeah. And although the Celtic, uh, we we had decided to kind of show really the most outrageous. Yeah. A yeah. lot so of the class. That's one of the most advanced. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the that's class, <laughs> a lot of the class is very slow. Mm -hmm. And when I, uh, when I teach the steps, we usually will do a series of the steps slow and then we speed them up uh -huh. and then slow and speed them up. That's what you'll see on the TV series that's going to be starting here on channel 11 yes will be because it is a teaching series yeah. that we demonstrate a lot of the moves very slow Great. and then we show exactly how fast some of these 90 year olds can actually yeah. do them. okay so let's give the specifics about that and then we'll give the specifics well about the specifics um I don't know that we have an exact. So breathworks for the brain. Breathworks for your brain on will be showing on NCTV probably next week. Mm -hmm. It will be beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, 
each week we'll have a brand new uh, exercise show or brain training show, which is what it is. It'll be shown twice, and the series is going to run for a year. We've committed to do this for a year, so there will be 52 shows. episodes that then wow. we'll archive. Wow. So uh, those seniors who cannot get to the classes can actually um, sit at home, yeah. practice on their own. A lot of them are done seated. Yeah. And what I'm hoping is that seniors who may be intimidated by the idea will watch it on the show and then decide to come to class. Yeah. That actually has already happened huh. because they um, showed one of the series on Channel 95 in Lake Wildwood and um, one of my students said that a friend had called her and said, I just watched that and I sat on my bed and did it along with it. I can do that. Yeah. So wow. she actually came to class yeah. the next week. Great. And that's what we're and, hoping. And so let's talk about the details of the classes then, uh, the two that you offer in our area. Nancy. Um, in Grass Valley at Peace Lutheran Church on West Main, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be West Main? West Main. Main. West mm -hmm. Main, up by the uh, Lyman Gilmore, mm -hmm. up by that area. Peace Lutheran Church, that's on Mondays and Thursdays at 10.30 in the morning. Lake Wildwood, um, which really is only available to Lake Wildwood residents, mm -hmm. is uh, available on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8.30 to 9.30. Uh -huh. So on Mondays, I basically teach the class at Lake Wildwood, yeah. run home, grab a yogurt, jump in the car, and run to Grass Valley What to a teach. day. I'm so glad we're not trying to tape this on a Monday <laughs> <laughs> on top of this. Me too. Yeah. Well, uh, and you are working now, uh, it's at the publisher in New York, uh, another book. Breathworks for Your Brain uh -huh. is the book that explains in detail the science behind the program. Uh -huh. um, the book will come with a CD of each of the exercises that I describe in detail in the book. Uh -huh. A DVD, do you mean? So people can a see DVD. it? A DVD, yes. Yeah. I'm uh -huh. sorry, I meant a DVD. Uh -huh. um, the book will come with a DVD of the exercises so that as the reader <clears throat> reads the book and reads the description of the exercise, which enters the brain one way, uh -huh. then they can put in the CD, look at the exercise, the, the DVD, excuse me, look at the exercises on the screen, see either it will correct however they were seeing it when they read it, or then, when they go back and reread it again, that kind of puts it into their brain uh -huh. three times. Uh -huh. And then it gives them a teaching aid that they can use every time they want, or actually use it as their personal trainer. Uh -huh. Oh, this is exciting. I, I just can't wait till it's out. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait till it's out either. <laughs> It's not easy getting a book published uh -huh. these days, let yeah, me tell you. Especially um, uh, by a commercial publisher. Yes. Um, it's, it's a challenge, but I, I know that this is going to be a big hit, Nancy. Well, it certainly is the direction that, uh, that the brain sciences are going. Yeah, and let's, we were uh, getting close to the end of the show, but you were telling me when we first, uh, well, even before the show, about the recent research that's showing that dance is really the most powerful way of uh, slowing down the dementia and, and Alzheimer's Absolutely. process. Uh, for one thing, movement is absolutely necessary in order to generate blood flow and oxygen to the brain. So as good as the intellectual activities are, and the doing Sudoku and the crossword puzzles and the game playing, nothing 
is going to impact the brain like uh, particularly complex movement mm -hmm. that creates the kind of brain chemicals that support and strengthen the neural processes. Mm -hmm. And so in the scientific world, they're beginning to realize that they need to do more study on the impact combining exercise and thinking. And that's the way I actually I advertise this program is that this is exercise that makes you think. Yeah. And it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And will stimulate the activity of the neurons to yes. grow dendrites and so on. And and some of those chemicals that get secreted are say say the names of those because they're starting to become more household words. Oh yes they are. Well acetylcholine uh -huh. which we may have heard uh, acetylcholine is actually a, uh, a neurotransmitter that is created uh, uh, in one of the ways by muscle contraction. Yes. And without muscle contraction, acetylcholine is not produced. Uh -huh. Well, acetylcholine is crucial for establishing the receptors for the neural signals. Uh -huh. So it's very involved in focus and concentration. It's very involved in short-term memory. Without the production of acetylcholine in your body, you're going to have more memory loss. You're going to have less ability to stay on task and focus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Speaking of focusing, we are going to have to focus on wrapping up here. Oh, okay. I just got the signal. I am so sorry. Listen, it's all right. There's but so we, much we to talk about. We managed to get the key thing out, I think, about the dance being really crucial. Yes. So you're you're just going to go great guns, Nancy, with your program. <laughs> I'm sure I'm so excited. Well, thank I'm excited you. about trying your class. Thank you ever so much for being on our program. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. <laughs>